This presentation is about how we classify matter. To begin, let's talk about how we define matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Everything in the universe is one of two things, either matter or energy. We're going to focus on matter for this one. Any matter that is uh, uniform and has unchanging composition is a substance. Uh, we'll come back to this idea in just a little bit. Scientists will classify matter by one of two ways, either by state or by type. And we're going to talk about these two. We're going to focus first on state. So here's a little graphic organizer that I have to help you understand three main types of uh, uh, three main states of matter, gas, liquid, solid. There is a fourth state, but we're not going to focus on. These are the most common ones that you're going to come in contact. Fourth state being uh, plasma, but we don't really focus on plasma simply because it doesn't come up that often. So now let's talk about how we def uh, separate these uh, three states. State is determined by matter's shape and its volume. And we describe these two things, shape and volume, as either being definite, meaning it doesn't change, it stays the same, or indefinite, meaning it can change, it, it, it varies. First state, solid. This uh, is any matter that has a definite shape and definite volume. So neither the shape nor the volume stays or changes. They stay the same. So, for example, ice. When ice is uh, solid, when uh, water is solid, ice will stay, keep its shape, and it won't change in volume. Same thing with table salt. Those are examples of uh, solids. Liquids, on the other hand, while they have definite volume, they have indefinite shape. So their volume doesn't change. How much space they take up doesn't change, but their shape can change very easily. They take the shape usually of their container, things like water and milk. These are liquids. The last one that we're going to focus on, gases, they have indefinite shape and volume, meaning their shapes and their volumes can change. Their, their shape and their volume will fit whatever container you put them in. So air, helium, these are examples of gases. If, if you take a certain sample of air and take, uh, take it out of a tank and put it into a room, it will expand to fill that room and take the same shape of that room. So now let's talk about how we define matter based off of uh, type. And Matter is classified as substance based off of a series of properties. We ask a set of properties to help us figure this out. First question we ask is, can it be separated physically? If yes, then it is a mixture. And we'll, we'll come back to mixtures in a minute. But if no, we say it's a pure substance. So if we can use physical means to separate it, then it's a mixture. Otherwise, it's a pure substance. Now, then we can then separate pure substances uh, into two categories based off of can they be separated chemically. If they can be separated chemically, we say that they're a compound. And if not, then they're an element. So let's focus on these two. Elements, by definition, are the simplest form of matter that has uh, a unique set of uh, properties. So elements, you have a whole table of them called the periodic table elements that we'll be talking a whole bunch about uh, later on in the year. But they include things like oxygen. That's an example. Uh, so is gold. And here, this is a neon sign. Neon is a element. There's over a hundred uh, known elements. Some of them are man-made, some of them are natural. But uh, we're not going to have to memorize all of them. You just have to be familiar with how to find them. Again, they're not all in periodic table. If it's a pure substance that can be separated uh, through chemical means, then it's a compound. That's two or more elements that have been chemically combined. So, for example, water. You probably know water as H2O. That means it has hydrogen and oxygen. So it's, in, uh, it's made up of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. We also have table salt, which is NaCl. That is sodium 
chloride, one part sodium, one part chloride. And we have other ones. Here's another chemical formula of a organic compound. Uh, and we'll be learning all about compounds uh, a little bit later in class. Now, going back to mixtures, remember a mixture is anything that, uh, any type of matter that is a physical blend of two or more components. Components, think of those, that's another way of saying ingredients. Two things, it's the parts that make it up. And there's two ways to separate mixtures. Mixtures, you have to ask the question, does it have uniform composition? In other words, is it the same throughout the whole thing? If yes, then it's a homogeneous mixture. If no, then it's a heterogeneous mixture. So going back here. So think of homogeneous. There's the same ratio of the components throughout. So we have two examples here. We have chocolate milk and we have uh, air. When you have this chocolate milk here, it's the same ratio of chocolate to milk throughout the whole thing. So uh, as long as you, you have it nice and well mixed up, they'll stay the same throughout. Air. Many people don't realize this, but air is not just oxygen. It's actually more nitrogen than oxygen. It's also got several other things. But the ratio is always the same in the same in a um, sample of air, of all the ingredients. If you compare that to heterogeneous mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures, the components differ throughout. So, for example, I got two examples here. We have vegetable soup and we have Chex Mix. In both cases, you have a whole bunch of different ingredients. And if you were to take two different samples, let's say we take two different uh, spoonfuls of this vegetable uh, soup, the ratio of your ingredients, of your noodles and peas and carrots, aren't going to be the same in those two spoonfuls of that vegetable soup. Same thing with the Chex Mix. If I have uh, two cups of Chex Mix from this bowl, they may not have the same ratio of pretzels and wheat checks and, and uh, any other pieces. They're different throughout, so that's a heterogeneous. So just to go back to our two uh, concept labs, uh, just to review, the three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Uh, solids have definite shape and volume. Uh, liquids have indefinite shape but definite volume and gases have indefinite shape and volume. And then on our concept map for type, you first ask can the matter be separated physically? If yes, it is a mixture. If no, it's a pure substance. For pure substances, then you ask can it be separated chemically? If yes, it is a compound. If no, it's an element. For mixtures, you can separate them based off of does it have uniform composition? Is it the same ratio throughout? If yes, it's a homogeneous mixture. If no, it's a heterogeneous mixture. And those are the two main ways that we separate and classify matter. Thank you.